Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Straight Talk Whiskey. I'm Nick, here with you as always, but this time we are in our satellite studio, if you will, here in upstate New York. This is sort of where I go for my summer job. So I've been doing this for about three years, so every summer it gets a little bit harder to film reviews, but we're here. We've got sort of the bare bone necessities, sort of a little makeshift, you know, go kit, if you will, for filming these videos. That's why I don't have the standard glamping glass or nosing glass that I usually have when you taste whiskeys, but, or review whiskey, whiskeys rather. But, um, we'll do with a, a little uh, tumbler here. So it gets the job done. Now, as you see, I do have whiskey in here already, and I'll tell you why that is just in a second. So today, for episode number 63, we're going to be reviewing the Willett Family Estate Straight Rye Whiskey. It's been aged three years, and it is at barrel strength. So, that's why it's been sitting out just for a couple minutes, not too long, because obviously it's going to take a little bit more time for me to, you know, gain all the, the aromas and taste and that sort of thing from a glass like this. You know, people say glasses don't make a huge amount of difference. It, it is what it is it's in the glass, but truly, and, and trust me on this one, you can probably vouch for it yourself. It does make a lot of difference which glass you use. Um, sort of the, the smaller openings at the top of the glass help funnel, you know, those aromas directly into your nose. So, but not too much is going to be lost on this, is that cast strength. Now, let's talk a little bit about this. So, we have bottle at barrel proof, which for this is 55.6% ABV or 111.2% proof. So, that's pretty, uh, it's pretty, pretty high up there. So, it's made by the the Willett Distillery that's been around for a little while, um, sort of the early part of the 20th century, and it was sort of revitalized and made a resurgence in the early 2000, 2010 and 2012 area. You know, it sort of got an overhaul, and they've got an extensive range of whiskeys out there, which you might have tried already. This I've never seen out in the wild, if you will, before, the three-year-old barrel strength straight uh, rye whiskey. I do have a two-year-old that's out there, haven't had that as well, but that's all right. So, I'll talk a little bit about it. If you go on their website, they do actually give you a lot of information about the whiskey, which is really awesome. So, they say it's not chill filtered. They talk about the char. It's a level four char that's on this. In terms of the mash bill, we know it's obviously a rye whiskey, so it has to be at least 51% rye in the mash bill. But with this, they use a higher rye mash bill, which is about 74% rye, and then the other percentage that makes that up is the corn malted barley. And what they do is they co-mingle that with a 51% or low rye rye whiskey, and, and more predominantly the higher rye content goes into it, but they do mix those two together to get what we have here. And the other thing that's unique about the Willow Distillery, and especially this whiskey, is that they, you know, first run through the still, through their their 60 foot column still, and then they take a second distillation through a copper pot still, which is really interesting. You may be familiar with that if you're into Scotch or Irish whiskey. So there you have it. Let's go in for the original aromas before they they walk out the door ahead of us. And being at 111 something proof, it's really not a problem. So what you're, what I'm getting here is just a rich, deep, woody sense. It's got really rich wood tannins, tobacco, tobacco leaves. It's really got an interesting hint of mint in there, which I don't normally pick up on a lot of whiskeys, but this is pretty, pretty predominant in the aroma. Also on the end of that mint is a little bit of a, a fruitier note. It's sort of like a grapefruit kind of fruit, which is really interesting. It's robust, it's rich, red, juicy, that sort of fruit. And also what you get is sort of this, uh, it's like a, I don't want to say old spice, but it's sort of leaning towards that level of, you know, people associated with uh, colognes or aftershaves that 
some older guys might wear. I, I personally like it, so it's not just the older guys. But anyway, the mint. Mint is what really intrigues me about this because I haven't tasted that, like I've said before, in other, in other whiskeys, especially American whiskey. So let's go in for the taste. Again, um, I don't think I said this yet, but no, I haven't added any water to this, so I don't always suggest that. It depends how much experience you have with whiskey to start with, so. Mm. This one's got a nice body to it. Now after, there's a, a little initial burn, I'm not going to pretend like there's not at 111 proof, but it's not like my eyes aren't like watering and I'm about to, you know, the room's about to spin. Um, it's not that. But really that mint and this fruitiness to it really comes off predominantly in the taste. So it's definitely this grapefruit note, a little bit of spice, some dried, dried spices. Banana, that's the other fruit that's definitely in there. It's got the taste of banana to it, and definitely the texture, which is kind of interesting. It's got a good body on this, it's not quick. The, the finish is nice and long, it leaves a nice trail of spiciness. Definitely a peppery kick on this. Now I'm not talking about like green peppers, but I'm talking about like black pepper, like crushed, um, crushed black pepper. This is absolutely delicious, I have to say. Now, when we talk about rye whiskeys, a lot of people think Canadian whiskey, because that predominantly uses rye. And a lot of times it gets associated with this gritty, sort of hell spiciness to it that a lot of people don't like. And it's sort of I guess you could say like Canadian Club, right? I've reviewed it before. It's fine for certain things. It serves its purpose. It's not really for me. I don't reach for it on the shelf too often. Actually, I haven't reached for it since I did the review on it. But anyway, so it's got that, it's got that spiciness to it, which a lot of people don't like. Now, they're using probably a lower amount of rye. This, is predominantly like we talked about, 74% rye mash bill. You know, mixed with the 51% lower rye mash bill. But anyway, when rye becomes the predominant grain, a lot of times what you get is this fruitiness to it, which is really rich and robust. It's not fruity like an Irish whiskey, or most Irish whiskeys, I should say, in the sense that you get a lot of green apple, you get a lot of really ripe fruit flavors. This is a very robust, you have dried fruits, like I said, you have those heavier ones that you might find in, say, rum or something like that. Grapefruit, banana is really interesting. I've only tasted that, I think, in probably yellow spot, in a single pasta Irish whiskey. And that lends itself really to the mouthfeel of this, because this is, it's got some body to it. And even at three years old, it's picked up a lot. You know, it's at cast strength or barrel strength. So it's picked up a lot of the wood influence, but it has a really unique, rich character to it, which is just outstanding. A little bit of lemon in there that sort of coats the palate, just glides along really easily and then leaves. That's also a, a neat little addition too. I think for summer, it's been, it's been a warm one up this way. I think I would really enjoy sipping this. It's just a good, robust, hearty whiskey. And I was, you know, I gotta say, with working so much recently, I haven't been too crazy about um, having a lot of drinks at night or during the week even. So I was a little bit hesitant 
when I had this because I thought that, you know, I was going to have to add a lot of water and I may not be able to sort of palette, you know, it might not be palatable at the 55.6% uh, alcohol by volume. But it really is palatable. It's nice and, and smooth, but it's got this rich spiciness to it. I mean, I guess what I mean by smooth is that it's not like setting your mouth on fire like a lot of other whiskeys that I've had, and that you probably had too, can do. So, I did bring a little bit of water that I was going to add and just see what changed, um, but I don't think I really need it in this, which is really strange to say at something this high proof. Now, I'm just recalling back to a review I did on the Jack Daniels single barrel at barrel proof. Now, that did... I, I should go back and correct myself there because I actually did have, I think, a little bit of hints of, of banana, and I think a lot of other people did too. And the same comes through with this, and maybe they used, you know, when they changed up their mash, but they did use a little bit higher rye content because that's definitely what's coming through with this. So we're getting towards the end of this whiskey here, so let's give it one last pass and see, see if we get anything new. It's very, it's very akin to sort of the the family tradition behind the Willet Distillery, in the sense that they have gone way back, you know, as far as they can to use the mash bill that was used a hundred years ago, um, a little bit less than a hundred years ago. But you know, they're innovating too at the same time. But in the sense, this tastes sort of like an older whiskey from you know another time when whiskeys were really robust and had a good, you know, punch to it. And a lot of day, a lot of times, I wouldn't say right now, because right now we're experiencing a real growth sort of in the whiskey market and all sorts of people are wanting to experiment with different things, different finishes and casts and that type of thing. No age statement, that sort of thing. But I would say maybe five, five or ten years ago, it was, and this happened, you know, all these things are cyclical. So, and you had, you know, coming out of Prohibition and that sort of thing, people wanting something that was a little bit lighter. That's why the brands like, you know, Jameson and that sort of thing, Evan Williams, Jim Beam, Jack Daniels, all that sort of thing, taking things down to sort of, you know, 40% ABV getting you real entry-level stuff so that they can mix it with with soda or ginger ale or whatever the hell else you want to mix it with. You can see I'm sort of drawing blanks on this because I, I don't do that a lot. There's nothing wrong with that. I just don't, don't really have the desire to. But anyway, this just seems like it's from an older time when, you know, this is sort of what people call their grandfather's whiskey or that sort of thing. Um, which is really, it's really nice to sort of see this variety amongst, you know, a dozen, dozens and dozens and dozens of American whiskeys and bourbons that are just, you know, skim the surface of palatable, you know what I mean? But um, this is definitely taking it to the next level. And I know a lot of people ask this about the price. Now I got this, and I'm not going to say where, but it was $31, which I'm sort of shocked with because I've seen some other stuff, particularly if you want to look back at my reviews around a year, maybe a little bit later from now, it could have been August of last year, that I reviewed something that was local to this area that was $60, $60 or $70 and comes nowhere close to to the caliber of this. So, just goes to show you, you know, some distilleries have a track record, a good track record, because they've been doing the right things for so long. So, you know, I think that's just a nod to Willet. And I've also, if you want to look, I've done the Willet Single Pot Still Reserve 
I'm probably missing a couple words, but straight bourbon, also from Gullet. But if you want to check that out, same distillery. So score, I haven't done a lot of bright whiskeys thus far, but I will give this a 94 out of 100, just sort of keep getting back into the scores like I said I was going to do and then dropped off doing it for a while. So anyway, that's it for episode number 63 or wherever we're at. So we'll be back again soon. Sorry it took so long to get a review up since the last one, but things have been busy and we know how life can be at some time. So at any rate, you're going to drink, drink responsibly, and we'll see you next time.